Naofumi Iwatani. In his world, he was one of the most legendary chefs in Japan. Someone that can cook up food, had multiple five-star restaurants, and he did it all. Any type of food, you could have it. Any food from any country, from any city, from any town, he would be able to replicate it with just one taste. But that is one thing that Naofumi would hold on to when he'd go to another world. A world that he didn't know would come true. A world he wasn't sure he could survive. Now, I hope you're ready because let's find out what happens and what if Naofumi was the legendary cooking hero. Yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy Golden Golden Falls Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back with a brand new Shield Hero What If, or well, I guess at this point is more like brand new Naofumi What If. This is What If Naofumi Was the Legendary Cooking Hero. This is a little bit more of a gag What If, I'll definitely say that much. I thought it would have been a fun idea to just mess around and have fun with this two-parter. So if you enjoy, make sure to leave a like, sub, and comment down below any suggestions you have for future what ifs. And yeah, that's about it. And I hope y'all enjoy. And let's get right into the what if. Let's get it. Now Fumi Iwatani, the world-renowned chef known all around the world. This man has restaurants everywhere. Countries, cities, towns, you name it, he has one there serving the most amazing food. American food pales in comparison to this, and he, when he makes American style food, it's even better than theirs. All he does is create amazing dishes, create the best recipes. And while he was writing down one of his recipes, he begins to feel something very odd. He sees that every time he writes, it seems to just disappear. He gets frustrated knowing that this recipe is perfect. He needs to make sure he gets it down right now. But right before he rewrites it again, the paper begins to glow. Writing begins to appear, but not the writing that he was well once putting on that piece of paper. He begins to see various other texts. Various other texts that explained the four cardinal heroes. The shield, the sword, the bow, and the spear but he's confused at why he would be seeing this but then it flips the page somehow his small piece of paper is turning into a book that book begins to read that the legendary cooking hero took the place of the one with the shield and he's confused cooking hero that sounds like some war stuff why would there be a cook in war but as he says this, the light begins to expand and covers him entirely, and he appears in a cage-like area. To the left of him, three other people. One with a spear, one with a bow, and one with a sword. Now Fumi looks down to see that he has what seems to be one of his kitchen knives. Seriously? A kitchen knife? Am I really a cook in this world too? I just get sent here and I have a kitchen knife? Now Fumi looks up to see a knight, actually multiple of them, and they begin explaining that the king wants to see them. But the other three say that they better have a reward, especially for dragging them here, and especially for the fact that they don't even know where they are. Eventually they make their acquaintance with the, with the king, and they begin to speak with him. And the king begins to explain the idea of the waves. The waves are basically these series of demonic invasions, and they need help from the four heroes. The king does kind of laugh to say that the shield hero isn't here, and it seems he's been replaced by maybe a knife hero? He's not so sure, but he asks if he knows his abilities, and he kind of shrugs not really knowing much, but he does start looking around his POV or his, his HUD, and he finds that there is some odd things he can spot. It's very similar to the video games he sees these kids play nowadays, and even his own kids. Now Fumi in this, he's definitely on the older side of things, maybe reaching more into his 30s, and he is a chef that basically owns tons and tons of restaurants, so he wouldn't be at a very young age at this point. They introduce 
everyone introduces themselves to the king and they're sent off to basically stay the night at a motel or a hotel a nice room and then they'll meet up with the king once again and they'll get to choose or be assigned party members they do begin to speak all four of them especially because they're all four heroes and now fumi asks questions about this whole video game like world and says he's not so sure about it back in his world he was a world-renowned chef not a video game player he did play some video games when he was younger something kind of similar to this but nothing too modern at this point and they begin to explain everything they know and they actually ask if he can tell them about his life and in, in its entirety in which he does and he says all basically all the hardships and everything he's learned but he does give him some tips about making some money he is some sort of entrepreneur you can say even though he is most mostly in the cooking world and they do begin to find an interest in that that maybe that will help them in terms of making money here as well and he says you never really know that money is basically transparent through no matter world they're in eventually they do head back to where the king is after the night is over and when they arrive partners are assigned but the cooking hero gets nobody now fumi doesn't have one person to help him but he doesn't really take offense to this he is well basically just a chef it seems like he just has a cooking knife and he understands it he he's asked the king if he can get party members outside of all this well obviously just the party members they were offered and he says of course that that is obviously something he can do and now fumi is actually given more money than usual but mine doesn't really find a reason to even go into his party thinking that it's not like he can really be put aside nobody really cares about him so he's just a useless cook so why would he she even try to manipulate him it's better if she sticks with the spear hero so that's what she does and now fumi heads off to basically get anything he can sorted out especially with his 2000 silver he heads to a nearby blacksmith and begins speaking about trying to get some armor maybe and that he is one of the heroes but he's not so sure about his powers he just has this small knife and he isn't even sure if he can injure any any monsters with it and the blacksmith is pretty interested and hears that well he was the person that is a renowned chef right and back in his own his old world yeah that is me uh would you like some food made for you if i can have you you know help me out from here and there i'll definitely hook you up and Earhart says if his cooking is as good as well the rumors say he'll definitely take him up on that actually the first armor of his choice is on on the house so now fumi picks out some decent armor puts it on and promises to bring him some really good grub he's actually gonna go get some some stuff so he can actually begin cooking very soon and he's gonna analyze his weapon because a good cook always plans ahead and Erhard likes the sound of this so he nods a farewell and actually drops a tip to Erhard of a couple silver pieces and heads out he goes to the local market picking out any foods and any anything he can even make into food in general thinking that maybe this world has special bonuses for food grabbing anything that could be edible thinking that maybe if he creates it properly he can give them special effects but he's not too sure about that so he grabs anything he can and he absorbs it into his weapon it seems like his weapon has some sort of infinite storage of some sorts and he can just take out well any food he wants he tries to put other items in there but it seems like it actually doesn't work it's only food raw meat stuff like that it seems like all that would work he heads out into the wilderness at least after grabbing all the stuff he needs and spending a good pretty penny on all of the stuff he wants he believes that quality is definitely going to be better than quantity but he'll find that balance sooner or later especially in this world and what he does realize is that when he gets these ingredients the quality of ingredients already skyrockets so maybe it would be a good idea just to bulk a bunch of things and then get it up to medium to high grade quality maybe throughout his leveling he isn't so sure but he does need to find the benefits of using his cooking in a world that is full of monsters so he goes out into a secluded place nothing crazy there's no monsters around and he begins tinkering with his his weapon and he looks to find that there is a cooking mode 
He's not so sure how this would work. Maybe it's going to put a table in front of him of some sorts. But immediately when he clicks it, it makes an entire kitchen around him. He's actually shocked to see this. It's very similar to the one that he has in his own world, but it's a little busted and run down. And he hypothesizes that when he starts leveling up, the kitchen probably gets upgraded easily, giving him tons and tons of more perks. And he actually thinks that there's actually really no reason for him to have motel rooms either. So that's actually perfect. They can just set up shop in the kitchen. And he's sure that he can get some nice futons and beds going pretty well pretty easily so that's a good idea for him to do but he begins making food he starts out with some simple stuff some of his favorite cuisine obviously some sushi some ramen and other things like that and he begins to see that there are stat buffs to them it seems that sushi gives him a stat buff a buff to agility ramen a stat buff to actually speed but he seems that it seems odd Maybe these stat buffs can be combined depending on certain ingredients. So he starts combining ingredient after ingredient, finding that various ingredients up certain levels or up certain stats. So he does find this to be interesting. And the more, it could be more potent depending on the food. So he tries to find the best possible foods. But he also does want to find a food that maybe just ups his level. Maybe it will give him experience. And he begins to brainstorm. Now, what food would give me experience? What food? Maybe even experience booster. Something full of energy. Maybe even quick energy? Hmm. He thinks that maybe sugary treats will give him that. So he begins baking something. And the baking process is a thousand times quicker than he's ever seen before in his life. When he bakes cakes and stuff like that, it takes forever. But this is like instantaneous. He puts he puts something in the oven, it's done immediately. He frosts it up and makes it perfect the way he wants it, cuts a slice and looks at it, and he sees that the whole cake will give him experience points. Partial pieces of the cake will give him partial experience points. Oh, now this is good. If I eat the cake, then I'll get a ton of experience. Now that is interesting. But there's probably benefits as well and downsides to the cake. He looks more in depth and sees that there is downsides. Obviously, this is going to give him a lack of energy in the beginning. And it seems like the XP growth will definitely help. But it's like the cake is doing the opposite of what it would do in the real world. The cake would give him XP, but it's going to make him crash way, way in the very beginning. Compared to in real world, if you ate a bunch of cake, you'd be high on sugar more or less for the beginning and then you would crash. In this case, you would get the benefits, but then immediately have the downsides. So he tries to brainstorm. Maybe he can find a nice sugary treat that isn't as big as a cake and maybe get something simpler. He does make something. He makes a small gingerbread man from some of the ingredients he has, seeing that it has a pretty good experience gain, but not too much of a sluggish return. And he eats it and he sees that his levels go from level one to level five immediately. He's shocked to see this and begins to think that obviously XP most likely will scale. So it's going to be on a really bad incline. So he won't be able to get five levels every time he eats a gingerbread cookie or anything. But this now this is beneficial. He goes on a tear making food after food, meal after meal, anything he can think of from drinks to solids to anything to soups. Anything he can think of that is in his repertoire, he makes it, puts it in his weapon, and keeps it for later. He actually tests this out. He's, he looks to see if there's an expiration date, maybe a timer, and it says infinity on all of them. It seems like no matter what, these things will not spoil as long as he has it in his weapon. He cooks through his entire batch of ingredients he has that he bought, and he thinks that this was damn well worth it. He has all this food for one to either sell, make a ton of money from it, use for his own personal gain so that he can be stronger and maybe even gain experience points. And then eventually when he gets party members, he can keep them fed and also get, give them experience points and boost to their stats, even if it's temporary, because some are of, of a temporary boost, but other, others are permanent, could be permanent minor strength boost or even permanent minor agility boosts. After basically finishing up in the kitchen, he actually heads back into the markets to see if anybody's still open, finding that nobody actually is. 
But while he does this, someone comes up from behind him saying that he's really the only market currently in business at this hour. And it's the slave market owner and he introduces himself to Naofumi, saying that if he wants a party member, he can give him one. Actually one that won't disobey at all. Naofumi is confused at this for a second, but then follows the man in to see that he has a ton of slaves. Naofumi doesn't know how to feel about this, especially because he's morally okay right now, and he doesn't really want to have the burden of a slave upon him. But he does say, or the slave market owner does say, that he would the, a slave would be pretty beneficial. So Naofumi caves in a bit and decides to check it out. He gets introduced to a high level wolf monster, but Nafumi says that he obviously knows he I can't that he can't afford that. And he says, of course, that they have much cheaper options as well. And that's when Nafumi comes across a little girl by the name of Raf Talia. A girl with raccoon ears and a raccoon tail. And Nafumi says that he'll take her. He'll make sure that she's okay. And basically get her back up to health. And He's surprised to hear this. The slave market owner says that Naofumi seems to be a very righteous man and someone that is very caring and that their their little relationship here will go a long way. And Naofumi ends up buying Raftalia, giving the slave market owner a little bit extra and he takes her away. He promises her that he's not going to do anything bad and that she'll be okay and that they're actually going to head to his his little kitchen of some sorts and that she needs some food in her pretty quickly and he actually has some food that would cure her of her mild cold and he does just that giving her some some food curing her of her mild cold and she's grateful to see this but he sits down next to her explaining that he's not so sure if he can fight on his own he's one of the heroes the legendary heroes supposedly he replaced the shield hero he's not so sure about that though and she's shocked to hear that he replaced the shield hero, and she's confused about this. The, sh the shield hero? Why would you replace the shield hero? And he says he didn't do it by choice. He'd love to have him here. He's heard, well, not the best things about him. Supposedly everybody hates him, but he's sure that the guy was a good person at heart. And Raftalia nods, saying that she's heard stories that the shield hero saved so many people and saved her own kind. And... Now Fumi is shocked to hear this and realizes that there's something going on, especially in Melremark. But even with that thought, he says that he kind of needs Raftalia to help him out. So he's going to get her a weapon and some nice armor and they're going to hopefully be able to train together. And that he has a large assortment of arranges of food for her to try and that they're going to give her a slight boost in her strength and all the other stats. And she's psyched to hear this, that she gets to try this food, and that all his food must taste so good. And now Fumi kind of smiles, and says that he's been cooking for a very long time, so he would hope so. But with all that said, they both go to sleep, getting small little futons in the kitchen area. And when he wakes up, the kitchen actually has changed, grown to be bigger, and it seems like it's morphing into some sort of house. And when they leave, it seems like the kitchen is gone immediately. It's like everything disappears. It's like some cloak of some sorts, but he's not gonna think too much about it. They head over to Earhart to get that, obviously that weaponry for her and obviously the armor. And once they do, they go to head out to get some training done in which Raftalia is easily able to defeat these small balloon animals in which she's definitely out of her sickness and has a good bit of confidence because of Nafumi. But that next challenge would definitely come when she would try to kill this rabbit that would spew blood and she really hates blood. But through some nice talking and some genuine responses, now Fumi is able to get her to kill that rabbit. During their small journey, he does come across a village called Loot Village. A village that, well, Earhart actually brought up previously saying that it would be decent to go there to get some money. So now Fumi actually goes around selling some of his food and they pay a pretty penny for that, racking up a good amount of cash. But on top of that, he gets information about these well, wild, wild beasts in the cave over there and that they should be slain. And now Fumi says that he could handle it with Raftalia and that they'll see what they can do. So they head over and now Fumi eats some of his gingerbread and his candy 
to gain some extra levels, getting him to about a level 12, and Raftalia currently at a level of 10. Now Fumi had already a jump start on her, but since Raftalia can actually kill things way easier than Nafumi ever would, she is definitely on her way to catch up. They head to this mine they have heard about, and they decide that they're gonna go search for any monsters they possibly can find, but they run into trouble sooner, they possibly, sooner than they possibly could have imagined. There's a dog monster, a two-headed one that Raftalia begins to freak out about, and Nafumi realizes that there's not much they can do. They can't get out. They don't have any food that would be able to make him strong enough to even keep up with this monster. It's too high of a level. He goes to guard Raftalia and tells her to run away, and she tells him no, that he'll die. And he shakes his head and says that's fine, as long as she's safe. She doesn't even budge an inch though. The two-headed monster jumps toward them and begins to walk toward Nafumi, and he goes to basically defend himself. But as the dog walks up, it begins to tilt its head, and begins to walk up and then sit down right in front of Nafumi. Uh, what? It begins to smell Nafumi's knife, and Nafumi's slightly confused, but starts taking food out. One after another, the dog shakes his head no, until he gets to this marinated steak that he made before. The dog begins to nod, and Nafumi throws it toward him, and he eats the food, and he begins to jump around in joy. Nafumi is very confused by this, but sees in the top left of his corner that it says that the dog has entered his party, and asks if he wants to basically name this, this new monster that has joined him. And he's shocked to see this, and he decides that he's just going to call it maybe Rover would be a good name, and he said he asked the dog how does that sound and the dog licks him on the face see Raftalia the dog isn't that bad right he's a nice puppy Raftalia goes over and immediately Rover allows Raftalia to pet him this actually helps Raftalia get over her fear of this dog monster and makes it seem as if it's so peaceful and calm and now with this dog monster it is a perfect time for them to train it's actually amazing having the dog monster on his side or a rover on his side with Rotalia makes leveling up so much easier throughout the entire month they level up on monster after monster and train after train and even now fumi gets enough money to get a custom order for well rover getting him some nice armor and some specialized claws and other things like that and even his teeth sharpen for the next wave after the entire month, Raftalia has rapidly matured, and Rover has grown quite a bit, making it so that he actually has three heads instead of two. It seems kind of wild, but the dog is pretty darn strong. At a level of 35, Raftalia at a level of 25, and now Fumi at a level of 21. Being that they are a pretty darn strong party, they're ready for this next wave to occur. During their trip to the Hourglass, the other three heroes actually meet Naofumi and actually are introduced to his new party, saying that it's pretty interesting that he has a monster and a, and a girl in his party as well, and he actually explains right off the bat that he actually saved her from a slave market, and that she's been helping him in training and all the other stuff um, throughout this entire time, and he makes sure that she's well fed and everything is good in her life. She nods, saying that her previous life was absolutely horrible. And now Fumi helps take care of her so much now. And it's like he's like an amazing person. And two of the heroes say that that's pretty good actually. And they should look into trying to free some slaves themselves. But Motoyasu, this sits differently with him. And especially when Mine begins to tell him that that is just wrong. A hero shouldn't have a slave in his party, and that he be she begins to manipulate him, but this will come into play a little bit later. After some time passes, the first wave then finally begins, and they head over to Loot Village to try their best to protect it, in which they can relatively easily. Now Fumi eats some of his strength and agility like temporary boost foods, and he begins to fend off the monsters as well. He's not as strong as Raftalia and definitely not Rover, but he's definitely able to somewhat keep up with the monsters and help defend Loot Village with relative ease. But what he sees is kind of odd. He sees a monster jump in the air from the distance and he begins to have an idea. He started making these odd looking foods for monsters. 
He believes that there's some sort of kibbles, and with the right ingredients, it can have insane effectiveness on these monsters. So he heads over to the main boss, asking if Rover and Raltalia can handle this for now, and they say of course, that it's actually been pretty easy. So he heads over, seeing the Chimera, and everybody keeps striking at the Chimera, and it looks like they're about to finish it off, but Nafumi tells him to stop. The Chimera looks at Nafumi and goes to jump on him, but then stops as well. He pulls out a kibble and the chimera tilts his head, just like, I mean, a cat and a dog would, getting surprised and intrigued by the food that Nafumi has in front of it. It runs over to Nafumi, sitting down, and Nafumi feeds it. And once Nafumi feeds it, the wave begins to disappear. It's as if he beat the, the boss with food. The other three of them are confused to see this and say that that's pretty unique. The fact that he just beat the main boss by taming it, it's as if he doesn't have to kill the monsters, he can just tame them in a way. He shrugs his, sh his shoulders saying that this probably wouldn't work on all the monsters. He is definitely more of a cooking hero compared to a taming hero, but it definitely benefits them in the long run. Especially the fact that now Fumi isn't really that strong himself, but now he can get other monsters to be strong. He has that dog monster or rover over there that's extremely strong. He gets Raftalia pretty strong, but she's more like a human. And then now he has this Chimera. The Chimera jumps in joy and looks at the other heroes and kind of growls at them. He pats the Chimera on the head and says that they'll figure out a name and that he's sure Raftalia would want to name him this time and says to not worry about the other three heroes that they're nice people. Or at least that's what Nafumi thinks. So he walks away and Itsuki and Ren are kind of impressed by this and Motoyasu just sees it as him taking advantage of another monster or another being. And they say that's just not true, they were gonna kill that being, so why does it even matter? They question why he would even think like that, but he just shrugs it off and leaves. And now, now Fumi has Rover, the Chimera, and Raftalia in his party. With the wave now completely repelled, it's time for him to head off. They're actually invited to a hero's state dinner, and now Fumi actually decides to attend, but he's very critical of the food. So frankly, Raftalia and the rest of his party just eat the food he's made. All of it kind of sucks. And he makes way better food than that, and Raftalia even says so, that the food over here is just horrible. Yeah, it's better than what she was eating when she was like imprisoned and enslaved, but this food compared to his is terrible. And he agrees, it's not very good. But he kind of just says that not everybody can be a professional cook, and if they wanna if they wanna bulk in terms of food, they gotta cut some corners, so it's understandable. But with that said, now Fumi just continues talking and actually hangs out with his monsters. Um, but frankly, they don't fit very well in there, so everybody kind of pushes the party to the side and they kind of just hang out in their own section because well, you know, they don't have any like shrunk forms or anything like that, unfortunately. But nonetheless, they have a decent time. That's until Motoyasu steps up and tries to challenge Naofumi, saying that he wants to fight for the freedom of, well, Rotalia. And Naofumi says that sounds ridiculous, that Naofumi actually got the slave crest off of her a long time ago, and she chooses to stay here now. I, he doesn't understand the whole point of that. And Motoyasu says that that's just not true. He must have some something in his food that he gives Raftalia to make her stay. And that even was brought to his attention by his loyal partners. And now Fumi says that this is ridiculous. That he can't really even fight on his own, so why would he fight somebody in a duel? It makes no sense at all. And he says that he won't take no for an answer, and now Fumi just goes to leave. And when Motoyasu tries to stop him, his Chimera immediately pushes him away. Basically growling at Motoyasu, and Raftalia tells him to, call, to calm down. It's okay Milo, don't worry about the mean person, he just doesn't understand. So, the Chimera, or Milo, calms down and begins to leave with Naofumi, Raftalia, Rover, and when they head out, nobody even tries to stop them, especially because Nafumi has some really scary monsters on his team. I mean, who would even stand in front of that? Nobody would. So he leaves without a trace, 
And the other two heroes agree that it doesn't make sense for him to fight for one of his party members when she's not even technically a slave and that he treats her really well. So what's the point? And he, they even point at Mine saying that he should not agree with just everything she says for the sake of agreeing, that he needs to think for himself sometimes. They definitely accuse Matiasu of being slightly incompetent, but they don't say that outright. But with the other party, Naofumi's party, they head off and begin to head to, to loot village once again, and they stay there for a while, but Naofumi has an idea. Maybe they should get another monster from the slave merchant. Maybe that's a good idea. They could even get something that's more tame, controlled. Of course, he pats the other two monsters on their head, the Chimera and the, uh, the three-headed dog now, pats them on the head and saying that, of course, they're tame. But if they get one that's already tame from the beginning, the leveling process will be easy to get them leveled up. So now Fumi goes over with an extensive amount of money, planning to spend a decent amount, but Rotalia even says that it's probably not the best idea for them to spend too much, but when they arrive, a good alternative shows up. These gotcha eggs are introduced to them, and he decides to buy one, and says that he'll hatch it and see what it comes to be, and if it's a Filoleal, it can definitely join the party as a way of travel of some sorts. They take the Filoleal egg to loot village, and it hatches relatively quickly, and the food that Naofumi gives it makes it into a grown Filoleal really really fast and also it sparks up its levels to it almost on par with Raftalia and over now Fumi himself immediately. He's shocked to see this but does realize she has a slave crest on and asks the Filoleo if she wants the slave crest off that they oh they always could and he's sure that she'll she'll behave and the Filoleo says that basically shakes her head and says that it doesn't matter. It doesn't normally necessarily say it out loud but obviously the the shaking of a head means that they don't care. So with that said, they, they begin to roam around Loot Village until they hear tons of people approaching. It's Motoyasu and mine with a bunch of royal guards. Now Fumi and his party approaches them and he hops on his Filoleo and he questions why they're even here. And they say that they're gonna take Loot Village over the rule for, for Motoyasu but they're gonna charge some insane taxes. And now Fumi says that is not gonna happen. That it cannot happen, that they are too cheap in Lu Village. The rooms to stay here and the food to eat, they're so cheap. They can't be doing that, that's just not gonna work. And he's been supplying Loot Village with a good amount of food recently, and they've paid him some payments, but he's taken basically the bare minimum. He's, he's sold to other places and got a pretty penny, but to them, they're like, like more or less like family. This town is a good town for him, and he wants it to stay that way. He, and he says that this royal decree will not go through. And mine says that he doesn't have a choice in this, but just as she says this, a shadow appears, basically from the queen giving her something. This frustrates mine and says that if he wants to protect the village so bad that Motoyasu will challenge him, challenge him to a race three laps around the, the village. In which Naofumi says that's fine. He hops on top of his chimera or Milo and says that he's ready. And they begin to line up and let's just say this is far easier than normal. Philo's kind of mad that she isn't allowed to race herself but she kind of shrugs knowing that Milo will easily win this just with no problem and sweat at all. Milo, even with the magical powers that are being struck upon him, potholes and stuff like that, it's not even close. He beats him by multiple laps and they're obviously deemed the winners. And Mine says that he cheated obviously, but even the shadow appears once again saying the only person that cheated was Mine and that she needs to get out of here right now because they lost fair and square. So they're forced out and Loot Village is saved. They thank Naofumi and his party and they all pet the, obviously the monsters. And just as someone goes to pet Philo, she grows in size. Whoa, I didn't know Filolios could do that. Raftalia says the same thing, that she had no clue, but this kind of works out. Now they don't have to have Milo just p pushing a cart, maybe they can have Philo and Milo, or maybe just Philo since she might have some hovering or flying type of capabilities, and Philo says that she basically loves pulling the cart by just jumping around and pointing at the cart with her little feathers. 
So she takes the cart and they all head off. Obviously, the other monsters have to walk on foot, and most of them are actually sent ahead to scout out to make sure everything is safe. But weirdly enough, when they set up shop once again, when Nafumi wakes up, Philo is a little girl? It seems that Philo has transformed even further, and he looks back at his other monsters and wonders if they can do that too. And maybe it's because of the slave crest, and that's why it happened so fast in terms of Philo. And he says that he's not going to think about that, at least not right now, but he'll have to definitely think about it if it happens later on. So they decide they're going to take her to Earhart, and when they do, he says that, well, he can't do anything about it. He has no magical thread, he can't make her magical clothing, so he sends her to the sends him to the dressmaker, in which she sends says that she doesn't have any magical thread. So they go to the magic owner, or the magic shop owner, in which they say that, she needs this gemstone for her loom to actually make that make that thread so that's what their next mission is they head off to go find that loom or the magical gemstone actually but during this drive or during this this journey they find a wealthy trader and he asks if he can be picked up and taken away and and Nafumi is fine with it as long as he can provide with some assistance as well and he says that he can definitely give that insider knowledge in terms of being a trader and some contacts to Nafumi and Nafumi says that sounds good to him and they begin to leave. A bandit group does intend to attack the wagon, yeah that's until they see the monsters and they kind of chicken out immediately and even the quote unquote stronger person that they have immediately runs away. They are terrified. There's a giant dog with three heads, a chimera, and they're just petting it. And then they have a giant Fololeo? What is that thing? So they're terrified, so they decide to leave and not even mess with them. So when they arrive, um, the trader thanks Nafumi, teaches him some new skills, introduces him to new contacts, and even gains him a warrant to the mine at the quarry at a discount. With all that said, Nafumi's party heads in to find that magical gemstone in which they find this alchemist tomb housing a cursed seed. Unfortunately, that seed is gone, and Nafumi is a little uneasy about that fact. But nonetheless, they have to keep heading in. They finish off these monsters that are trying to trick them with this weird noises, and Milo is easily able to kill them like it's nothing before they can even do much damage, and eventually they find the new. The new who made a nest in this gem vein. Immediately, Milo walks up to the new and goes over. Wait, no, Milo. No, don't, don't, no, Milo, no. As Milo walks over, Milo just completely bites the new's head off. And now Fumi just looks away as Milo shows the decapitated head. Yeah, good job, Milo. I could have tamed that thing, probably. That's fine. Milo then begins to spark with electricity after eating the being and shows that there's the gems right behind him. It seems like Milo actually gained the powers from the new and Nafumi even looks to see that it somehow breached the 40 level cap. It seems like Milo is at a level of 50 now, maybe expanding the cap? And Nafumi does take intrigue to this thinking that their, their party will be at most likely a cap of level 40 pretty soon, especially, obviously, Rover. But now that Milo has surpassed it, maybe he can raise the level cap himself. Maybe even make the class upgrade more potent using some food. He's not so sure, but it's definitely a theory he wants to try out. With all that said and done, though, they head back, make the thread, easy as that, and now Philo has a beautiful dress. Now with that done, they begin to head out, and they're tasked by the trader once again to deliver something, to deliver a herbicide to a village. When they arrive, they see tons and tons of monstrous plants. They have just overrun the village entirely, and they go to see what's going on, and the villagers say that this seed, this seed from the tomb of something, the spear hero took it and tried to end their local famine, in which it worked for a little bit, but now it sprouted into a giant plant and started killing people, attacking them. And they're so worried. They, they beg now for me, please, can you stop it, please? 
And now Fumi begins to say that he probably can't. He'll send his other his two other monsters out there. He'll send Milo and Rover to at least try to herd the th the, the monstrous plant the best they possibly can. And then he'll go out and try to get a cure using this herbicide. They thank him profusely, and he begins making a cure via his cooking skills. He uses the mix of the herbicide in his in his weapon, and then the mix of various other ingredients, and he makes something that for the monstrous plant. It's something very interesting. He takes it to the monstrous plant, and basically gets Raftalia and Philo to close the distance, and he makes the monstrous plant eat it. And once the monstrous plant does so, it begins to shrink in size, and now Fumi puts something on the ground, a tiny little cup and full of dirt, and he basically captures this monstrous plant. And when he does so, the monstrous plant is actually a level of one, and it says that it's in his party. Now see, that's not what I thought would happen, but I guess I'll take it. He said he even explains to Raftalia and Philo that it seems like the monstrous plant has kind of been tamed, but he's not sure what he can actually do with it. I mean, especially because it's kind of just a plant. And they decide that they're going to put it in the carriage for now, and maybe it can be tame or something will happen with it, but they're not so sure. They head back up to the village, and they begin telling them that they took care of it, and show them the, even the little cup. They're shocked to see it that now Fumi was able to do to do that. He, they thank him and ask if, they, if he needs anything, and he says that's not the case. But he does want to get their opinion on some new food. So he gives them some new foods and stuff like that to try. And they thank him so much. And they say that he's such a good chef and a cook. It's so amazing. And he thanks them for the compliments. But he just wants to spread the food around the best he possibly can. He actually has a bag of seeds for them as well. So hopefully they can get the growth process on regular plants back and up and running. They thank him again and he heads off. And they are tasked with another merchandise sale, and they have to head to a hot spring in which they stay the night. Relaxing in the hot spring with the monsters, Philo, Raftalia, Milo, and Rover. It's a nice time. And then, obviously, the little plant monster right next to them just hanging out, chilling. And after that night, they begin to hear rumors spread. It seems like a mysterious disease is spreading through a village nearby. So now Fumi decides to go investigate finding out that supposedly a dragon is decaying on the top of the mountain, Ren, the sword hero, killed it but left the body there, so it's rotting. So he tries to cure any of their diseases using various foods that he's, find, he's found out, and he gives them anything that he possibly can, and it makes them feel a lot better, in which they thank him, but he says that he shouldn't be thanked quite yet. They're not actually cured of the, the disease, so he's going to go up and dispose of it. He has some good monsters for that, so it should work out pretty well. They decide to take the cart up as well, and stopping there. They leave the little plant monster, especially because it's level 1. He doesn't want it to get hurt, so he tells the plant to not make a move, but it's not like a plant can move anyways, but they head up to see the dragon. Wow, this is definitely something else. We gotta get rid of it. You up for it, Milo? How about you, Rover? They both howl and get ready to basically get rid of it, but as they walk up to be rid of the entire dragon, the dragon comes to life. Now Fumi is shocked to see this, and he basically tells Raftalia and Philo to take cover, but Philo basically activates her more Filolio Queen form, her giant form, and begins to attack the dragon as well as on top of Rover and Milo. They begin fighting, and Raftalia enters the fray as well, and now Fumi gets kind of frustrated because he can't really help very much. And and then out of nowhere, he feels a slight tap on his shoulder. Huh? He turns, and nothing's there. He turns the other shoulder, and nothing's there as well. He turns around completely, and he doesn't see anybody. But what he does see is he sees vines. Tons of vines. These vines begin to spread and begin to cover the dragon. He's shocked to see this. Oh no, what's going to happen? If this plant devours that dragon, will it turn mad again? He's not sure, but as the dragon begins to get, get engulfed in these, this plant, the plant begins to absorb the dragon, getting rid of it entirely, but as a last-ditch effort, the dragon breathes fire on the plant, burning a good bit of it, but it just regenerates back. 
Now Fumi is shocked to see this. It's just level 1. How is it even... He looks at the stat sheet and it says that it's already a whopping level 40. He's insane to see this. He's not sure how this even happened. But it must have had something to do with his herbicide mixed type of food that he gave the monster to kind of make it shrink back down. Immediately the dragon is just absorbed into the plant and the plant just recedes right back into the cup. Now Fumi goes to check it out and nothing even happened. He looks at the plant and the plant begins to grow slightly and taps Nafumi on the face, basically to say that everything is fine. And he's shocked to see this. He has a plant, he has this Milo, which is a chimera, he has a three-headed dog that totally could have more heads, which is a scary idea, he has a giant Falolio, and he has a half raccoon, half person. This is definitely an interesting party. But with that said, luckily the dragon is handled. He's surprised that it it only took a plant to get rid of it, but he's happy to see this, and especially because they got tons of XP from this. Now Fumi at a level of 35 at this point, Raftalia at 40, the three-headed dog or rover at 40 as well, and obviously the Chimera Milo at 60. He broke through that, that chain of leveling somehow because he devoured that that new and even gained himself some new abilities their party is pretty well balanced and now fumi believes that it's time to maybe that they should head back toward the capital maybe they can give them some class upgrades and he can actually figure out how this whole class upgrade system works with his whole party at 40 or higher he heads back he begins to head back and philo spots somebody running out to her and now Fumi's confused, he goes out to see a girl by the name of Melty, a blue-haired girl that loves Falolios. And she asks if they, they could basically accompany her to the capital, and that she doesn't really know her way back. And of course Philo says yes, and now Fumi just smiles, shaking his head, and says as long as she likes to pet monsters, that there's no problem at all. She runs over to the Chimera, hugging it, and seeing that it's very friendly, as well as everybody else is very friendly. So, they take Melty eventually back to the capital, and their goal is actually to get some class upgrades. But when they arrive, it seems like they're refused. He's trying to say that that doesn't make sense, that they should be allowed to get their class upgrades, but that's just not the case. But he analyzes the Dragon Hourglass a little bit, and wants to basically make some food. Maybe he can make a type of food that would allow them to go over the level cap just a little bit, at least giving them a boost in XP until they can get to that next place. But as they leave the Dragon Hourglass, now Fumi is actually attacked, attacked by Motoyasu. Motoyasu goes to strike him, but immediately his Chimera or Milo swats, swats Motoyasu out of the sky. He immediately pins him down and looks to Naofumi basically as a way of saying, would you like me to kill him or not? And Naofumi shakes his head. Don't kill him, Milo. It's okay. He brings Milo over and Motoyasu says that it's not okay, that Philo is another slave, that he's enslaving these creatures, but Philo says that that's just not the case and that he should not attack Master Naofumi, ever. And she kicks him in the nuts, basically sending him flying while in her giant Filolio form. Now Fumi laughs really hard about this and just shakes his head and Melty comes over and apologizes for the trouble and she's with a couple knights. Now Fumi's confused by this but she explains something, that she personally is the second princess and that she's the heir apparent to the throne when the queen passes on. But her older sister Multi, or what you know as mine, was going to be that heir apparent but since she's so toxic she's actually not allowed to be. And hearing this now Fumi is not surprised. He says that it kind of makes sense and Melty does seem a bit more proper than her and thanks her for the, well you could call it, hospitality. And Melty says that of course, that of a true hero like himself deserves that hospitality, but these other ones like Motoyasu, she thinks otherwise. Now with that handled and Melty being in the good graces of Naofumi 100%, he heads over to Earhart to get some upgrades for his team, especially because it keeps expanding. 
he gets them all new upgrades. He's not able to really get a new upgrade for his little plant guy, but he decides that he'll give them some nice um, special water or some special food that he that they can or that his plant can eat. Now with some time left before the wave, Nafumi wants to scout out some towns, finding some refugees though, and he finds that they're starving, begging for food, and he gives them plenty of food, making sure they're all well fed, and even gives them some seeds to actually be self-sufficient, and asks what even happened, and they say that Itsuki, they he basically started a revolution, but it just made everything just as bad not too long after, and Nafumi is frustrated to hear this. He heads back into the city before the next wave, and he encounters Ren and Itsuki. They ask him, actually politely around this time, if he's been taking their rewards, and he actually explains that he only took them because they actually didn't finish the job. Ren asks what does he mean by it, but he, he explains very quickly. He says that the dragon that he defeated, yes he defeated it, but he didn't dispose of it. He needs to dispose of it so that it doesn't plague the other village, and that's what happened. And Itsuki asked what happened with him, and he said that he started a revolution, yes, but he just put another dictator into power, so it's just as bad. Or worse, they're fleeing for their lives and sacrificing their starvation for it. And he, they didn't realize that it was this bad, so they were like, basically say that they'll make sure to pay more attention, definitely in the future. I'm glad to hear that. I mean, I'm sorry that you took, I took your rewards. I mean, I don't really need it. Here. He tosses them some extra money, and they say that that's not even the amount they were going to be given, that's way more, and he says that he's fine on money and to not worry about it. So he heads off and says that he needs to be ready for the next wave, especially with only 24 hours left. During this time, his party just rests, and he actually starts brewing something up, or really, making something. He makes these sweet tarts. He's not sure exactly how they work, but it seems like it makes their level cap plus 5 once he, they eat them one time. But they're only allowed to eat it one time, so he gives it one to Raftalia, one to Philo, one to Rover, and then one to his plant, but he doesn't know how he's going to eat it, and that's until the plant basically covers it and just swallows it whole, and he just shrugs his shoulders. Knowing now they have five more levels to grow, they say he basically tells them that they should basically wait on him to get some more XP, XP boosting um, foods, and that they can get them capped off at least the rest of the way. So he does just that, being that Raftalia now at a level 45, Philo at a level 45, his plant monster and Rover at level 45, and then obviously his Chimera or Milo at a level of 60. With some more time left, he actually makes himself some foods to raise his XP, but it seems like it's harder to raise his own XP compared to others, so he's able to get to around the same level as them from 45 to 47 but that he had to use a ton of his ingredients, saying that he definitely needs to restock after this wave, but it seems like they're definitely ready for the wave to come. The wave then arrives. They're at Loot Village, and they begin to protect it with all of their might, and it's relatively easy actually. There's really no challenge in defending Loot Village, and he leaves it off to the rest of the people that are there to defend it, because after three hours of defending, Nothing has happened. The wave is still going on and he's confused at what's occurring. So he takes his party up to where the main boss is, finding that the heroes are arguing. He yells at them, telling them to stop arguing that they need to work together to make sure everything goes according to plan. He points something out. He throws his knife at a shadow and retracts it back to his hand and the shadow begins to expel a soul eater. See, that's the main boss. Stop being idiots. Immediately, Raftalia goes after the Soul Eater, slicing at it. She personally isn't able to kill it immediately, but with the help of the rest of his party, and also Milo, it is super easy to kill the first Soul Eater. But when the second one comes out, everybody is shocked. But Naofumi decides that he actually wants to see if he can tame it. So he walks over with some kibble and thinking that maybe this would work, but as he reaches out to give it to him, the soul eater tries to bite its, his head off. He rolls out of the way and the rest of them are basically telling him to stop messing around. Even his party say that that was way too dangerous, that he should not have tried to do that. And he just shrugs. But as he's about to tell them to finish that one off as well, something else kills it. A blast from the sky and someone floats down 
on the corpse of the Soul Eater. It's a woman in a black kimono wielding two bladed war fans. The true enemy of this wave has just appeared to them. Glass easily defeats the other three heroes' parties and challenges Naofumi. Naofumi says that he technically can't fight for himself and that he does some other manners of trying to defeat people. He has his party, he has his food, and that's about it. But he does have this. He flicks something into the air and Raftalia says that they can handle it, that they, he shouldn't resort to that, but he says that he just wants to try it out anyways. It's a food pill, something very odd, Glass is confused to see this, and he says that the only way he can really beat her, at least on his own, is if he eats this. But the only thing is, if she eats it, she'll die, so don't get any ideas. The rest of his party stand by his side, and he pops it in his mouth. He swallows it, and it immediately skyrockets his leveling to twice the amount. He goes from a level of 45 to a level of 90. His body flares up in strength, and his knife grows like a machete. And he looks at it, and now Nafumi has entered a new state. It's called the Butcher State. Now Fumi begins his assault on Glass, and Glass can't really keep up, especially with the help of his monsters. She begins to panic and tries everything in her disposable disposal to get away, and eventually she's able to escape into the wave. The fight was quick, but now Fumi could tell that without that food pill, even his party would have struggled a lot against Glass. He realizes that they really need their class upgrades, a full class upgrade. His food won't cut it, and they need to get stronger. Because if he relies on this food pill too much, it's definitely going to have some after effects. The food pill forcibly wears off because the wave is now gone, and there's no reason to be using it. And now Fumi gets really bad pains in his stomach and his biceps. He says that it would have been a lot worse if he, t if he kept using it the entire time, but luckily he didn't have to. The other three heroes are in complete and utter shock, staring at Naofumi. What kind of monster is he? He was supposed to be some lame-o, someone that only cooks, that's it. But now he's fighting off monsters like that, like Glass, the woman that came down and one-shot a soul eater that they couldn't even defeat. They are at a loss for words, Motoyasu is obviously in his own head, thinking that that was just a fluke of some sorts. But what will Naofumi pull out of his bag next? What will Naofumi have cooking in the kitchen next time? With the second wave defeated, Naofumi now realizes that his power needs to accelerate even further beyond what he currently is at. Yes, he has his food pill. Yes, he was able to transcend his power through the use of a technique or use of a special thing that he had. But that will not work forever. Him, his party, need to grow in strength exponentially more than what they're at currently. They were able to handle the threat in wave number two, especially involving the otherworldly figure, Glass. But will he be able to do this consistently? We'll find out now on what if now Fumi was the legendary cooking hero. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If. Whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. I am back for the finale of what if now Fumi was the legendary cooking hero so if you enjoy make sure to leave a like sub comment down below any suggestions you have for future what ifs and that's about it that's all i need to say i'm not gonna waste any more of your time and let's get right into the what if let's get it now that the wave is completely finished the heroes are sent back to the castle and are sent to meet with the king once again but the king is frustrated the king is questioning various things that Nafumi has gone through, questioning if he's truly telling all the truth, and he says that he's said all the things that he needs to be that needs to be said. He's explained everything he's done so far, and he doesn't need to explain any more. The king finds it otherwise, saying that Nafumi has to be hiding something, but Nafumi says he's definitely not. Now Fumi basically tells the king that he cannot waste any more time here and goes to leave. But the king spouts out that if he doesn't tell the complete and utter truth, that he'll torture his party. Yeah, he can't handle or deal with the rest of them, 
may or um, Naofumi himself, but he can deal with the rest of them. Naofumi is pissed to hear this, turning around, and his anger itself summons something. It actually summons Milo. They think that they're going to be able to keep Naofumi there because he personally can't fight fight them, at least super effectively, without maybe majorly upgrading himself using that food pill. And he's not going to use the food pill again because it does hurt his body quite a bit. But when Milo comes crashing through the wall of the palace, Milo immediately grabs Naofumi, sensing the danger, and jumps out. The king is pissed to see this and tells them, to hunt him down right now. Now Fumi, now on the run, begins to leave the palace and leave the castle, knowing that it's time for them to take the next step. They need to get their class upgrades and everybody needs to flourish further beyond, well, whatever they have around here. But as they're leaving, someone actually stops them. It's Melty. Melty begins speaking to them and saying that she really needs to, well, have Naofumi reconcile with the king and that it's okay that he broke, well, Milo broke through that wall. It can be fixed. It's fine. But Naofumi doesn't care to reconcile, saying that he's threatened his, his partners way too much. Melty hearing this is shocked and what happens after is even more shocking. One of the knights that are there goes to try and stab Melty, but immediately Milo jumps in front of her, kicking one of the people away, then wrapping his tail around the guards. Now Fumi then tells Melty that they need to go now. Milo immediately kills the rest of the guards and then leaves with them as well, and they begin to run as fast as possible, traveling using the speed of Milo, Rover, any, and then also Philo as fast as they can and they're saying that they're gonna try to make a break for shield freedom but unfortunately they're gonna be cut off very quickly they're cut off and all the borders are practically sewn shut you can't even get out but someone does approach Naofumi it's one of the shadows again and Naofumi recognizes her saying that she's he's seen her before and she hands him something it seems to be an emblem and says that the queen wants to speak with him as soon as possible. And Naofumi says that's fine, he can do that, but unfortunately, the borders are going to be closed off. With the head start though, only the knights are, are ahead of Naofumi, and they're able to outmaneuver and get away from everybody else. But when he does see Ren and Itsuki, he throws something at, him, at them and basically screams that he hopes that they can figure that out. He runs off and eventually they're able to escape with with a lot less trouble than any time in like in the usual canon and they're actually found upon by someone else van richnot a nobleman actually who rules this area that they just entered in brings them into his manor basically explaining that he'll protect them and basically keep them here until dawn but unfortunately they're found relatively quickly richnot is arrested and the maids hide Naofumi, Milo, Raftalia, everybody, anybody that they possibly can. And Melty decides that she'll distract the knights, but he's uneasy about this. Naofumi is scared that Melty will die before they're even able to help her. So Naofumi and his party will make a break to help them right after they know the, co the coast is clear. They leave and Raftalia begins to explain to Naofumi that the, one of the people that came as well is by the name of Rabier, and this person is a terrible person, someone that tortured her, kept her enslaved and various other things like that, and that she has a plan for him, and Naofumi always will tell her that she needs to pick and choose her current battles, what's important to her, the death of him or the safety of the others. And she nods and, and, and basically is sorry for talking like that. But now Fumi says he understands that when someone would do such a thing like that, it would force you to feel that, that way. They arrive, they arrive at the kingdom and it seems like there are tons and tons of demi-humans at the gates, slamming into the gates, trying to get in. And they, they basically walk in to try and find Melty and Van Richnot in which they enter the castle and then find them while knocking out mo a multitude of guards. They are able to save Van Richnot and also Melty 
and Raftalia has her blade to the neck of Rabier. She's not so sure if she wants to pull that trigger. Does she want to end the life of this person? Will that even give her justice? Will that even make her feel better? She's not even sure. And he's pleading. He's begging for forgiveness. So she decides to not do it and just uses the hilt of her sword, hitting him in the temple, knocking him out. Thinking that this was enough, she turns to leave, but Rabier somehow stumbles to his feet trying to grab her ankle, but when he does, she kicks him off and he stumbles out a window. Unfortunately, Rabier is falling from the rooftops and slamming onto the ground. Raftalia didn't want to kill him and feels that she did, but Naofumi reassures her that that was his choice. He made the choice and you gave him mercy, but he didn't take it. But what they didn't realize is that Rabier would be still alive when they get down the staircase. When they arrive, it seems that Rabier is freeing a sealed away Tyrannosaurus Rex like dragon monster, which promptly kills him and heads for Naofumi. Naofumi tells everybody that they need to run that the best idea is to just escape. There's no reason to fight this thing, especially with the lack of, well, the Dragon Hourglass upgrade. So they need to go. They begin to run, and now Fumi can see that this, this monster is keeping up with them. He even debates with popping one of the food pills. Yes, it would put him out of commission for maybe a day, but it will increase his power to the point that he may be able to go heads up with it. He goes to reach into his pouch, pulls it out, and goes to eat it, but Philo tells him not to. Philo says that a voice is telling him or telling her in her ear to actually go to that lake over there. So he listens. They head over to that lake and something arrives out of it. A giant Filolio Queen. He's shocked to see this as the Filolio Queen destroys the monster and then shrinks back in size. She's actually in her human form, introducing herself as Fitoria. She basically brings them all to the Filolio Sanctuary in a far away ruins. And now Fumi asks about Philo, asks about everything that's going on. And she explains that, Fitor or that Philo and her growth is due to a hero raising her, especially now Fumi. She's heard rumors about this cooking or something like that hero. And she was very skeptical, but now Fumi seems very interesting, very kind hearted. And now Fumi kind of rubs his back of his head and says that he tries his best, but unfortunately, this world is not too fond of him personally. And she says that she agrees, that it's obvious that they still hold resentment, or at least that country holds resentment for now Fumi, being that he should have been the shield hero and that they don't like the shield hero very much at all. Now Fumi questions what does she mean by other countries, and she says that that's what he what she wants to ask him about if he knows about these other countries that these other countries have waves as well and now fumi hearing this is shocked and tries to think of anything maybe he can help them right now but fitoria tells him to calm down what needs to happen now is for the heroes to make up and now fumi without a thought says that he totally would but there's one of them at least that does not like him very much, and it's really not Naofumi's fault. Fitoria nods and says that she can tell, she knows that, but unfortunately, there is no way around this. He, he needs to try and figure it out. So, he makes a promise to Fitoria that he'll do his absolute best, and then he'll help with the other countries, anything, any way he possibly can, and she asks how he would do that, and he creates, on the spot, tons of foods, and she looks at all of them and can see that they all have stat buff buffs. Some permanent, some temporary, and some are even level caps, so they can up level caps. He explains that all of these has helped him on have helped him on his journey, so it should help the other countries as well. Vitoria is shocked to see this, but says that this will be perfect, that he'll be able to help all the other countries once they figure this out. He nods and agrees to obviously try to reconcile with the other heroes. And Fitoria has one more asking, one more thing. She begins to say that she wants Philo to be her successor, so they're gonna have a test for her, and she wants him to go along. So they agree, 
The next morning, Vittoria takes Melty hostage to coerce Naofumi into making up with the heroes, or to test the convictions of Philo really, and they fight in their humanoid forms, and Philo is a bit, by a bit actually, is a good little bit stronger than her canon self, so this would go down a lot easier. Get and this boost and or this boost in power and base stats would basically allow Philo to be almost at the top of the party. Yes, Milo has the level advantage, but Philo has this base stat increase that is just like having the levels Milo has. So once they get their class upgrades, let's just say these people are going to be very, very powerful. After all that is said and done, Naofumi and his party are sent to the nearest hero nearby. And that hero, unfortunately, is not Ren or Itsuki, it is actually Motoyasu. And Motoyasu is more aggressive than normal, and he says that he'll never forgive Naofumi for what he's done. But Naofumi has no idea what he's talking about, even questioning him further and further, but Motoyasu refuses and says that he must know, he knows exactly what he did. And Naofumi begins to get frustrated, screaming at him, saying he doesn't know what he did, he didn't do anything. Whoever's telling him this is a liar. It doesn't even matter anymore. He, now Fumi has come here to make peace, but it doesn't feel like Motoyasu is even budging. Now Fumi is visibly and just vocally frustrated at this person. The fact that he doesn't listen to a word anybody else says, but that witch behind him. And he says that don't ever call her a witch, that she's the most trusted person or trustworthy person he knows. And an arena begins to show and appear around them, and he says that they're not going to be allowed to leave. Now Fumi says that they're going to make sure that all of them are knocked out, and then Motoyasu can basically listen to what Now Fumi has to say. Before their fight is about to begin though, Philo begins to sense something, and begins to panic. Philo says that they have to get out of here right now, and Now Fumi asks if it's that urgent, So, and Philo says yes. Immediately popping the food pill, doubling his level, and making his small knife into a giant cleaver, he's able to slice through the barrier that's keeping him in, and they immediately move out. Now Fumi, in a deeper voice, even responds to Motoyasu, telling them that if it's that serious, they might want to move as well. Immediately, they're able to leave, and something comes crashing down. A giant blast comes smashing into the ground, creating a crater. And... Now Fumi goes to inspect that crater, realizing that they would have been evaporized if not for the warning Philo just gave them. And Motoyasu still, in his, oblivio in his oblivious state, says that, that Now Fumi must have tried to kill them. But Now Fumi says that makes no sense. Why would he warn them if he was trying to kill them? And just as he says this, someone appears. The Pope. The Pope begins to mock them, saying that... The shield hero isn't here, luckily, but Motoyasu, the spear hero, is as just as dumb as the past ones. The spear hero just fell right into his lap, and he begins to say that mine played such an amazing role in that too, and now it's time for him to take over everything. Immediately, Naofumi goes charging at this man and begins to fight with him. Naofumi is able to keep up to a certain extent. His strength is extremely high right now, and he's able to actually cut through a lot of the defenses, forcing the Pope to add more and more energy from his followers. But just as Nafumi begins clashing once again with the Pope, two other people actually blast the Pope with their own special abilities, and that's Ren and Itsuki, the two people that were dead. Supposedly, the Pope killed them, but they're alive and they're well. They explain that the shadows ha helped them out, and that the qu well, the queen's shadows helped them out, and they were able to survive. But now it's time for them to work together. They point their weapons at Motoyasu, saying that it's time to, to stop being so oblivious. Motoyasu stands up and says that he'll help for now, but he doesn't want to deal with, but he's cut off by Naofumi and the other two, saying that he is the one that is in trouble, not Naofumi but they'll talk about that after. Now Fumi says he only has about 45 seconds left on his timer, and then he'll collapse in pain, and it's gonna be force him out of battle. 
so he's gonna try to give them all an opening. He looks at his own party and looks at Ren, Itsuki, and Motiyasu and tells them not to squander that opening. Immediately, a cathedral begins to consume around them and the Pope begins to mock them, saying that there is no way they're getting out of here alive. Now Fumi though has other ideals, he pulls out another food pill and Raltalia screams at him telling him not to do that and he just smiles, popping the, the, the food into his mouth and that makes his level skyrocket by a hundred more levels, making him a whopping 190. Now Fumi now knows that 30 seconds, honestly, that's generous. There's no way he even has that much time, but he's able to slice through the defenses of the Pope like butter, completely obliterating the defenses and allowing a giant opening. And that opening, is perfect for all of them. Motoyasu strikes the Pope, then Ren, then Itsuki, then the entire party of Naofumi, and they all work together, blasting the Pope, as Naofumi drops out of his giant, more giant man like a form, and collapses to the ground, gasping for air. It's hard for him to even breathe, and he can feel his body rejecting what just happened. He believes that he's not going to make it, but maybe he will, maybe he won't. I guess he'll, he'll realize if he wakes up in the next morning. He passes out and he doesn't wake up that next morning. He doesn't wake up for days, three, four, five, a week, two weeks. Now Fumi is out for a while, but when he wakes up, he sees people around him, including the queen. The queen's there apologizing to Naofumi, saying that she's sorry that he had to get put in that situation that wouldn't have had to have happened but now Fumi looks around to see that his whole party is okay and just smiles it doesn't matter if they're fine I don't really care and she's shocked to, to hear this that's this man he's completely beat up gone there's no guarantee he'll be able even to walk and now Fumi basically tells them to help him on that chair and he sits up and says that he can't even feel his legs this is kind of what he thought would happen if he decided to do such a thing and they say that that's not no it, it can't be they they can heal them they can heal him it has to be they have to be able to heal him now Fumi he he has to be able to walk and now Fumi shakes his head and says that it's now time for them to be better better than him now Fumi explains that he's always thought of himself as a support hero anyways frankly that form he was making it was too powerful for a reason. That's why it messed up his body. His quote unquote cooking hero status is more or less not made for brute strength. And that's pretty obvious now. Now Fumi asks for some crutches and he begins to try and walk around. He has some feeling in his legs, but let's just say his legs are torn apart. He can't really fill them very well and frankly his arms aren't that much better but he's able to move them around a lot easier but if we're talking about fighting fighting is far out of the question very far out of the question luckily Erhard is able to get him some some stints and some good things for his or like casts and stuff like that for his arms and his legs and it helps him walk a little bit well and these braces would help him walk around with his party but it's not going to help him fight by any means. It seems like now Fumi has, see, has seen his last days in terms of fighting, but he can still help his party members out. He begins explaining that he is a support hero. Yes, it might not have seemed that way this whole time, but his party was the reason why they were being, being so successful, and that's what matters. So now Fumi says that he'll make sure that everybody is powerful enough as long as they can speak on good terms. So the four heroes council then begins. Unfortunately, they're about to already leave to Calmira, especially because some time has already passed. Uh, actually, a lot of time has already passed. So now Fumi begins to speak quickly about the fact that he's not gonna be able to fight in this next wave, not even close, but he does wanna work with the other heroes. Itsuki and Ren are completely down with that and are completely fine with trying to make do with the best they possibly can. And, and now Fumi pulls out something. 
it's it's a food that will give them both a, a plus one in strength buff permanently so he wants to see if his food would work so they eat it and it does seem to work and now fumi says that it had to be tested off the bat because frankly if it doesn't work then it'd be such a waste of time for him to make a bunch of food especially for the heroes for it not to work at all so now fumi explains that he'll make as much food for the three heroes as possible but he needs an apology from that man right now he points at Motoyasu, and Motoyasu says he has nothing to apologize for, but Ren and Izuki disagree. He definitely does. They've He's had a grudge against Nafumi this entire time for absolutely no reason at all. Nafumi has only been nice to everybody, but of course Motoyasu wants to be a burden here. And Motoyasu says fine and apologizes, saying that he's sorry. But even Nafumi doesn't even know if this is sincere but says that it, that's the best it'll probably get. But with all that said, now Fumi is going to take the time that they're at Kalmira to, to basically look around, find new ingredients for food, as his party will train on their own. He explains to his party that this is just gonna how, how it's going to have to be and to protect each other as best they possibly can, especially now that they got their class upgrades, in which they did get before they left to Kalmira but this would be kind of severe actually this would be good for them but luckily they did that because if they didn't they would be in a world of trouble because unbeknownst to them in 24 hours that next wave in Kalmira is about to begin now fumi is cooking up food after food and tons of things like that that's until philo comes running in from the shores and begins to panic she says that there's a temple underwater and he asks why were they underwater anyways and she explains that they basically defeated a lot of the monsters that were high level and were trying to find anything better but they really couldn't and he looks at their levels to see that that philo and rautalia with a plus five level cap are actually at a level of 65 rover at a 65 and then also milo is at level 80 so he's kind of shocked to see this and says that he has level cap food for them as well so he gives them level cap food making it so their level cap is 70 70 70 um for for obviously Raftalia, philo rover but then for milo it would be a level cap of 85. they run off to see the temple and now fumi goes down with them to see that the wave is in only 12 hours he begins to immediately contact the queen, telling her of this, and she says she will whip up ships as soon as possible. Just get as much stuff done as, as humanly possible for him, and he agrees. So he has lines of food of food for the three heroes his, and his party. And when everybody conjoins about three hours before the first wave, actually, the other three heroes' parties are about to dig in, but now Fumi says not to touch anything, that that's not for them. He's only made enough for the three heroes and then his party, not for them, and frankly the food would be wasted on an undertrained party. And Ren and Izuki kind of agree to this, saying that frankly they did not train their parties to the tip top shape like it seems like Nafumi has. And of course Nafumi has obviously his own advantages, but it doesn't really make sense for their, their parties to eat the food that is on the plate at least right now maybe after the fact if there's leftovers so they agree to that and they begin feasting on anything they possibly can giving them drastic changes in their stats and the other heroes including Nafumi, have gained insane amounts of xp it seems like Nafumi never realized this in the first place though is that he gains xp when other people eat his food and since his entire party is eating like the food that he's created via his his knife and all that um, it seems like he's gaining an insane amount of XP, even with the heroes around. It's kind of odd. He swore that he wouldn't be able to level with them around, but he'll take what he can get. Making the heroes be a pretty good level. We're talking closer to the level 100 range, and now Fumi's, and now Fumi's party is around the 80s, and then, uh, well, everybody's at 80, except for Milo, who's at 90, which they did eat more level uncapping food. So now they're almost, they're basically on par with the other heroes as well, with Naofumi at a level of about 65. 
He's on the lower side. Frankly, he hasn't been able to do real training in a long time, or at least in the last two weeks since he was out cold and then the last day or so. But hopefully this will be enough to defeat the wave. So he sits on one of the ships and begins to watch as they sail out. He watches as the wave, at least the wave bosses, are eliminated relatively easily, even by the heroes that are there. And now Fumi watches as Lark and Therese, the ones that he actually met before but didn't talk too much, actually step onto the, the wave's boss and begin to announce that they are here to defeat the heroes. They charge in to fight the other three heroes that are there, but this fight is a lot more close. It is not one-sided by any means, but the fight is definitely fair. Now Fumi watches on and wishing that he can help, but his party tells him not to worry, that they will help. So immediately they're able to gain the upper hand, and it seems like Lark and Therese are definitely on the back foot, and they're forced to actually retreat slightly until Glass arrives. Seeing that Naofumi is not even fighting, she actually immediately goes for Naofumi, telling him that they will have their fight, but Naofumi shakes his head. I can't fight. I unfortunately crippled my limbs on a fight that I had to more or less sacrifice a lot. So Glass, your fight is with my party, not with me. And frankly, it seems like Lark and Therese need your help anyways. He points over there to see that Lark and Therese are actually about to be defeated. Glass shakes her head and says that this isn't over. She immediately goes over there and starts helping, but even that isn't enough. Now Fumi strolls over, basically being helped by some of the people that are on the ships and stuff, and he basically begins to explain that they don't need to kill them. That's it doesn't matter that they can figure this out but if they so choose to continue this war path that they're on to save their own world it's gonna end in their demise and he promises that as he says those words the wave then retreats and so does Lark, Therese and Glass saying that this isn't over they celebrate the win of the waves and now Fumi is actually thanked by everybody including Motoyasu, but you know, kind of like a half-ass thank you, but still a thank you was a thank you. With all that done, with the wave vanquished, the legendary cooking hero now Fumi wants to now set his sights not only to help the other world, but also to help the other countries. That's his goal. That's what he wants to do. So throughout this time, he's gonna visit every single country hopefully get home bases everywhere around that place and be able to travel there freely and be able to supply them with the means of defending off the waves well, fending off the waves the best they can with his help he should be able to support not only Melremark but every other country there but will he be able to do it alone will he need the other heroes as well to step in maybe they all need to go to a country themselves and defend it together well i'm not sure and that is a story for another day so if you enjoyed like i hope you did make sure to leave a like sub and comment down below any suggestions for future what ifs i have a lot in the works a lot in the works so many ideas going through my head and so little time to do it but we're gonna keep on this train and i'm going to keep on grinding for tw eventually for 20k subs and then further and further let's make a goal 50k by the end of the year boys let's do it that's about it and i hope y'all enjoyed i hope all y'all have an amazing day later